welcome to Face the Facts. It's great to have you here all once again. We missed you last week. We had April vacation. It was uh, nice to have a little bit of a breather. But we have the same assorted cast of characters here back again for some more heated debates on all things sports. We have Phil Healy, our NorCam Studios production guru, jack of all trades over there. And we have Tom Smith down there, fresh off a uh, very well reported uh, April vacation. So uh, welcome back, everybody. Hey, always good to be back. Always good to be back. I have no, I have no, um, that was probably the best introduction I've probably ever given any of you. I have nothing but, nothing but praise here today. No, and it was the second time you had to give it. And that's, that's my we fault. That's my fault. That's right. We won't take it with that's a right. grain of salt either. Yeah. Right. Well, yeah, yeah exactly, Tom. That first time, but you exactly. know, sometimes the second time's a charm. On today's program, we have all sorts of things that we need to talk about because all four teams here in Boston have something big going on. Maybe it's not just Boston teams. Maybe it's more of a national uh, uh, stage as well, too. Um, we have the Patriots with the NFL draft happening this week. As a matter of fact, when this show is being recorded, we have the NFL draft kicking off that night before. Uh, we have the Red Sox really doing well right now. Just came off a great two-game sweep. Really only scored three runs, but it was good enough yeah. to beat the New York Mets and Jacob DeGrom. We have the Bruins, who just came off a tremendous win against the Penguins on a Tuesday night. We'll talk about that. And then we have Phil's favorite, I'll be nice. Yeah. They, they, they got to win. They're on a one-game win streak. I'll stay positive on it. They got the Celtics. That's oh, I got, plenty of neg- I got plenty of negative I can throw at you. Don't worry. I do have some amazing tidbits from a big-name person. And has something to say about the Celtics' future, which I will chime in towards our Celtics. I'd love to hear it. I would like to first go start off in this program with going over the NFL draft and the plan for the Patriots. So as of right now, the Patriots hold the number 15th pick in the first round here in this 2021 draft. There's a lot of unknown here. There's a lot of, do the Patriots keep the pick? Do the Patriots trade the pick? Do the Patriots draft the quarterback? Do they go and trade to get Jimmy Garoppolo back? There's a lot of questions, a lot of unknown. So I'm curious to hear everybody's kind of take on where your mind is at before round one kicks off here this evening. So I'm going to go to Phil first. I'm going to ask Phil if he has anything in particular on his Christmas list of what the Patriots, what you would like them to do and what you think they're going to do. So go ahead, Mr. Belichick. Uh, Well, actually, you know what I said when we first did this, I would love for them to move up and pick a quarterback. Uh, in the first round and then you know and snack snatch up jimmy g so at least they have jimmy g and they have someone their backup for the future because who knows about jimmy g's health but now i kind of also like part of me like i'd be happy with a couple of different scenarios if that happened they moved up in the draft picked up a a a good quarterback and uh, snatch up jimmy g in the coming days or you know whenever Uh, and or they didn't move up and they got a defensive player at like for 15, like the bolster, like the front seven or something. And they uh, pick someone in the third round, uh, the Florida quarterback. Mm-hmm. I've read the guy's name. Uh, I want to say it begins with a, I want to say chase, but they already have so many chases on their team, but, um, and, you know, and then snatch up Jimmy G. I mean, I'd like, I think, I think Jimmy G is coming. And I know I poo pooed on it uh, when Nick was talking about it, uh, he said he had a feeling about it a uh, month ago. I have a lot like, of uh, feelings. Well, yeah, Sometimes sure. Good feelings, hurt feelings. You know, yeah, you know, and it I don't. Depends on the I, day. I, of the week. No, it's true. It uh, sometimes the weather affects it, but I, yep. I have to respond and respect to it more. Uh, respect it more because you were right on this one. It looks like they are because I didn't think they were going to go. I thought they were going to just kind of stay, stay with uh, Cam Newton because of the contract right. they gave him. But, but the, the thing with the Cam Newton contract is um, it's not guaranteed. I mean, they could okay. very well just release him and say, sorry, Cam, we're going in another direction. It's mainly Which based on the playing time. I like Cam Newton was their insurance policy this offseason. It was to make sure if something doesn't happen that's bigger and better, that they can go back and say, well, at least we have Cam Newton. Because I think we're all convinced here that there's there's just no place for – uh, who's who's our backup that's done? Jared Stidham. Stidham. Thank you, Stidham. He's nothing. 
he's he's a Brian Hoyer, <laughs> Hoyer ball boy. Hold He'll on be with Tom Brady carrying his sack later in life. So I mean, it is what it is. <laughs> hey, people's sack need carrying. Yeah, you know. And caressing. <laughs> So I'm looking at as we continue our family friendly show this, uh, this afternoon. <laughs> we are going to look and break down um, some potential names. So Mac Jones, it looks like, is going to most likely be going to the 49ers. Um, that's because uh, Trevor Lawrence will definitely be going to the Jaguars. I mean, that's 100% given. I, there's no question in my mind that that doesn't happen. Um, so if Mac Jones is going to be with the 49ers, you have to kind of take a back seat here in a way and think about, okay, if that's your choice, how does that make, how does that impact Garoppolo? You think Garoppolo is going to be happy with that and want to work with the 49ers? Heck no. And I so, think that's why he waved. I think that's why he waves his no trade clause. Right. Right. Now for the pit and the Patriots, the Patriots are in a good place right now. Very good place because yesterday uh, Teddy Bridgewater was traded and only took a sixth round pick to get to Denver, to right? To yeah, Denver. To Denver. Yeah. It also took Denver off the list of the potential target for where Garoppolo may go. There aren't any really other teams that would entertain a Garoppolo move. Outside of last night, a very interesting rumor, and I guess it was factual that came out, was that the 49ers reached out to the Packers. I don't know if you guys Ooh. heard. This. No, I haven't. And the 49ers asked for Aaron Rodgers. And the 49ers will give them Jimmy Garoppolo and a series of other players and draft to bring Aaron Rodgers to the 49ers. Yeah. Oh, give him one the Packers said, get the heck out of here. We're not doing one thing with uh, Aaron Rodgers. Now, we've talked about it before, I think, maybe on this show or I've, maybe in general I've mentioned it from before. But I would be of the caliber of I, – I would entertain an Aaron Rodgers to New England. I would. But I don't think that's, I don't think that's possible. I think Green Bay is going to um, have Aaron Rodgers there throughout the rest of his career. You know, and remember, Rodgers only has one Super Bowl. So is he that good? We don't really know. So it looks like Mac Jones will go uh, number three to the 49ers. Um, looking at my next take, um, they the Patriots will not end the night without a new quarterback. That's basically how I'm looking at this. So whether that's a Justin Fields or somebody else's name that could be there. I, I don't really know. But as I, of right now, I, I'm leading to believe it is Justin Fields. I also heard a uh, rumor that the Patriots were uh, looking at Julio Jones. Yep. I heard that too, Tom. Yeah, I'm looking at Julio Jones. At, uh, Trey Lance to trade. the other name I wanted to mention too. Uh, they're going back and forth. Trey Lance versus Justin Fields. I don't I don't think they really know which direction they want to head with yet. I what do you guys think about that? Justin Fields, uh, I would be in the Justin Fields camp. I think um, just US, um, yeah, it's USC, right? No, not USC. Oh, um, Ohio State is yeah, where yeah. Justin Fields has come from. I, I would take that over. I think it's North Carolina State for Trey Lance. No, yeah, more higher level competition. I feel a little bit better with a guy that's kind of in a system that's played some high caliber teams. That's just my take. If and they no one, end up going with a quarterback here in the first round, and a, and a lot I of guys that going to happen. A lot of a lot of guys that have gone, uh, come out of Ohio State and gone pro haven't had too many bad careers. There haven't been too many with bad careers. No, they really haven't. No. Nope. So, I'd have more faith in an Ohio State guy. <laughs> I want to go back to Phil's point with the whole Jimmy G front. Um, I I agree totally with your take on the injury prone. He hasn't had a season yet where really he hasn't played a whole season. He's been injury prone. Even when Brady was uh, was out on that suspension from, what was that, 2018, 17? No, he, he, played, was, he played a he game played three and a half. And a half or quarters, three and a half. Three yeah. and a half games or whatever the heck it is. Yeah. yeah. And um, he didn't really light the world on fire, I don't think. He he held his own. He, held he had a own. good first That's game. How I think he's going to be with the Patriots. He'll, he'll, he'll hold his own. It's not going to be a superstar. I mean, no, think about. I think, oh, good. I think um, he'll get us to the playoffs. I don't think he'll he'll, you know, he'll beat the Chiefs, but I think he'll get us to the playoffs. Yep. Yeah. No. Uh, I uh, just. I mean, I, I think it's if we had a better quarterback, if we had better quarterback play, you possibly have like 
maybe three to four, maybe even five wins in addition to what you had. Uh, and I don't know, man. I, I think also the running game might be a little better. I think, like, offensively, I think they'll just be – Yeah, I do too on the running front. I, I want to see a year of Damian Harris together with – Oh, it's only um, Michelle. Michelle yeah. Together, I think that's a good one two pair. And James you White. Your lines improved. You know that you've got Dante Hightower back defense. You've got Kendrick Bourne, yeah. Aguilar for wide receivers, your two tight ends. I mean, this team looks a whole lot different than it did for last season. So that's a plus. Plus, if we could get Julio, too. Yeah, what do you guys think of that? That, that yeah, is I, the thing that I, kind I, of blows I, my mind. Yeah. So I think I think What's the well, trade? Yeah. so I was talking I've been talking to my uh, coworker about it yesterday and today. And you know, it's either the Falcons fourth round overall or fourth overall pick in the first round, um, Julio, or and I, I guess they're entertaining Julio and Matt Ryan as well as a package. Oh wow. So a lot so of a lot of, of moving pieces. Like for what Matt exactly? Ryan. I would not take Matt Ryan. Uh, I uh, I'm I, I up mean, and he's down. Better than Cam, he's better than Cam. Yeah, he's I better wouldn't. Than Cam. I and, wouldn't mind you know, with, seeing what's up with our offense. With our offense, I don't think he would be too unsuccessful. I think he was. He's been snake bitten a lot in, in his career, Matt Ryan. I think he's had I, very bad coaches. I think he's had offensive line issues. I, think I don't blame a lot of it on on Matt Ryan. Maybe being in New England and maybe being with Belichick and McDaniels and that system changes things. But I don't think it's something that – I'm just thinking Patriots front. I don't think the Patriots – I think they said if, they, if it's Julio Jones, we'll take. But I don't know if they want that. I, yeah, one. I don't think Bill would entertain it. But I, I also I don't, I don't, also don't think he would be – I think he would be successful here if he can't – if, you know, he somehow managed to come here. Yeah, I would doubt it. Even for a year. Even for a year. I mean, look at the offense we have. Plus, if we got Julio, like at least he'd have someone that he's familiar with, you know. And then, you know, you got Aguilar, who's a, a decent receiver who would probably be slot. And then two tight ends. Although we'd probably have to trade one of them to Atlanta to get Julio. Well, who was um, who was the other uh, slot guy we or receiver we got from San Francisco? Who was that? Oh, I forget. His name. Yeah, that's right. It was one of that's Jimmy Garoppolo. G's favorite that was targets. Garoppolo is one of his favorite targets. So that's yeah. why again. This whole offense that they built is really built around the Robert. Well, and here's another thing on the Julio Jones trade package. Uh, I guess there were a lot of rumors. There's one of the rumors that said, I'm just reading it. Uh, Patriots get the Falcons number three pick uh, and Jones, and they send their 15th pick and maybe another uh, like 2022 first round and or uh, Stefan Gilmore. Uh, to help Gilmore's which, name is up there on yeah, it's if, been thrown around. With the trade. I'm not convinced yet either side if he's staying or going. I think he's a wild card and he's a wild card because he's always been a name that's been around trade rumors his whole career. So mm-hmm. that's why I can't really figure out if he's coming, going, what's going to happen on that front. But he's a name that's a that's a, 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 um, a commodity to other teams. Yeah, I'd say so. So he's a pretty good that's, corner. That's that's how it's kind of slots up for the NFL draft here. There's could potentially be a lot of surprises tonight. There's a lot of unknown. There's a lot of rumors flying. There's a lot of question marks on what teams are going to do with trading up down. From for a, for a fan that's really never really cared about the draft that much for the NFL because the Patriots have really never mattered. This one actually matters here a little bit here tonight. So I am actually interested in seeing what's going to happen. It's not going to take me away from maybe watching the Bruins game or anything, but I'm sure going to be up to date on what's going on. Well, the, I won't be able to watch the Bruins game, so I'll, I will be watching it. I'll draft most <laughs> likely, at least the first, like, 30 minutes. At night. I do want to talk about the Bruins next because I was, re- I was, I was pissed off on the loss against Buffalo, very bad. That was, that was disgraceful effort that Friday night game. And then the Washington game um, that they had was, no, it wasn't, it wasn't Washington. No, Pittsburgh. They played Pittsburgh Pittsburgh game on Sunday, losing one to nothing, just didn't show up, didn't want to play. Um, I wouldn't say that because I was able to watch that game and I, I, they couldn't get anything going. 
they couldn't get anything going, but they held the pit. They held the Penguins scoreless until halfway through the third. With, All right, with, I'll give you that. With, it was with better than, Swayman, it was better no than Friday night's game. It with was better Swayman, than Friday night. no less. They had Swayman in net. I like Swayman. I do too. But like against the Penguins, and they only give up. They only give up one goal. Actually, it wasn't even halfway through the third. It was the last five minutes. I actually will make a bold statement here and say that Swayman's better than Rask right now. I mean, like I said, I wouldn't be too disappointed if the if uh, Sweeney was just like, you know what, we're just going to pick up some backup guy and let Swayman go full start. Are you in the camp where Halak is by? I don't. I've been in the camp where Halak just needs to go <laughs> for the last I don't know forty games. <laughs> Yeah, I, I've grown to really think that this Swayman kid has a lot of a lot of skill sets that this team can utilize. They don't need Halak anymore, you know, with whatever he had with COVID and all that crap. You don't really need him. If it's Rask and it's Swayman, that's fine by me. I know Rask is playing this evening against the Sabres. Feels like that's all we play here is the Sabres now. I mean, it, it's it, it took a big gamble for for um, uh, Cassidy to you know start of uh, Vladar and Swayman. I mean, I know we didn't really have a choice. Didn't have a but choice. He, but he had, you know, he had to choose between uh, both of them, and it was wild. Sway, Swayman's got the upper hand on the whole matter right now. Um, I I just absolutely love this Taylor Hall trade. I love it. I just this team. They sync well together. That second line just looks so much, so much more energized and focused. And it reminds me a lot of the first line in a way and how they mesh well together. You know, Hall's presence on that line has made a really, huge difference. It, 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 it's awesome. All the doubters that said, oh, Taylor Hall is done. And this Taylor Hall had played for the New Jersey Devils and the Buffalo Sabres. Just get out of my face. And the Coyotes. Get out of my face. And the Coyotes. You know, I don't understand the criticism that was there. You put this guy in with some good players, you're going to get some solid production. He's been nothing short of – I give him an A+. plus. I give him an A-plus since he's been here. But I will say the one thing that has worked even better than Taylor Hall, and Taylor Hall has been a stud, is Mike Riley. Mike Riley is just – brought the fresh air on a defense that was so banged up and needed it feels like every shot he attempts it goes on net they can get a rebound of some sorts he gets his assists he gets his job done i love his style it's great it's great to see and uh you how can you not like not like uh lazan either i mean he's solidified that fourth line quite a bit to the point where you can actually sit jacob de down and say look you're not going to skate, you're not going to score, and you're not going to do anything on the ice. You're done. You know, they can do it to Coyle, too. They can do it to Wagner and Corrali. The four of those guys, their production this season is disgraceful. You know, I was very high on Coyle, and I was, I, I remember I criticized the move when it came. I was one of the first ones. I said, Donato or Coyle, and, you know, Coyle ended up proving my point very quickly. But you know what? I'm going to call him out again. You suck, dude. You suck. Nut up or go up to the fourth floor, whatever it is. Tenth floor. I don't care. Go to the fourth gonna, floor, too. It's fine by me. It doesn't really matter. You know, whatever floor works, you get your ass, your head out of your ass. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make a bold prediction. And the, you know, the season's not even over. And you know what happens when I get mad and but, I get nasty with these players? You know I'm, what happens, oh, right? Yeah. I, and that's I part of why I'm doing it. So, I'm Charlie make, Boyle, you I'm, suck. I'm going to make a bold prediction for months, months before it's even going to happen. And I think, I think the Seattle Kraken and the expansion draft are going to take Jake DeBrusk off the Bruins. Good. Get him out of here. I Bye. think that's, I think that's what's going to happen. I'll pack his bags. I'll drive him to Logan. I don't give a crap. Phil, can do you call agree? This show when we title it, can we call this show? No, I don't Charlie agree. Coyle. I don't agree with it at all. I think, listen, Charlie, Charlie Coyle, he's a national treasure, and you three, <laughs> or you two, are just yeah, why don't you in, go your, in your ivory and tower on high, trade. looking down on him. Yep. Actually, I will. I will say this: as as far as what I have followed, it does seem like the Taylor Hall trade is working. You know, knock on wood. 
it does seem like everything's coming together in a point where they need to. And, you know, I, like Tom was saying, they, you know, Penguins are one of the best teams in the East. Am I wrong? Or they were, wrong. they're leading the division. Yeah. So, I, I actually mean, think the Penguins right now, they probably map up a little bit higher on my list than the Bruins. Bruins got some things to prove still. Yeah. But I mean, I listen, I like a good scrappy team. It looked like they have a bit of confidence uh, going into let, and that when the playoffs start in about oh a couple of weeks. Or, uh, May 10th is the last regular season game for the yeah, Bruins. It's, it's all coming to a hilt it, so quickly, man. It went by in a like a, a flash of an eye, really. Yeah. I can't. I couldn't believe it. I was like, "Wow, it's already, it's already." Their yeah. schedule for the Bruins maps out like this: they play Thursday night. That's against the Sabers. Then I think it's Saturday afternoon, May first. Let me just double check it. Yep, one o'clock against the Sabers again. All these games are at home. Also, uh, the Penguins are playing the Capitals tonight, so that's going to be a big game to keep an eye on. Okay, and we want we want the Capitals or the Penguins. We want the Capitals to win because they are uh, the Penguins are in first place in the division they are oh, did okay. you see did you see Charles go to town on that guy yes i he's out he's the oldest player in the nhl to get a fighting major that's that's kind of that's unreal. Mean, um, and the bruins will face the new jersey devils on monday night so we got a lot of uh uh, Monday and Tuesday, we got a lot of May, crap. We got a lot of crap to play right now. Yeah, you can May first, May like time. May first, third, fourth, sixth, eighth, tenth, and eleventh. The and sixth the last is the games, Rangers. The Rangers are really not any good. Am I right on that? Wise. <laughs> they're fighting for a playoff spot. Okay, so they're they're that they're decent. So we play the Rangers back to back. The only team that we that we don't play the rest of the season or that isn't fighting for a playoff spot is the Sabers. The New Jersey Devils are fighting for a playoff spot. Um, nope, never mind. No, they're not. I thought they we were. Got the but Islanders yeah, Islanders May tenth. We so, got the Capitals on May eleventh. That's the last regular season game. The so, the, all right. So in the division standings, the Capitals are are actually in first because they were able to um, pass the Penguins and the Bruins beat them. Why? Okay. Um, so. It's Capitals at 68 points, the Penguins at 67 points. The Capitals also have a game at hand on the Penguins. Okay. Um, and the Bruins are one point behind the Islanders with one game at hand on them. And the Bruins have two games at hand on the Rangers and the Penguins. And the Rangers are four points behind the Bruins for the last playoff spot. So, so the Bruins have a chance to win out the division. Is yeah, what I'm basically know, getting at. I just don't want to. I, I, I'm, I, I just hope that we're not saying to ourselves that they have that chance where they're not going to make the playoffs. That would be catastrophic. So, as long as they don't lose to the Rangers, like they, exactly. they have to, they have to. So they have to beat the Sabers, the Devils, and the, they have to be, win the next four games to even have a chance to not worry about the Rangers. Okay. Is, I mean, nine times out of ten, I think we're going to get the Sabers in the next two. They, we should. They, I think that they're not going to let what happened last Friday night happen again. No, I, I, I don't, don't see, see that. Happen. I don't really see them losing to the Sabers, but you never know. And then the last two games of the season are the biggest games for them. They're playing the, yeah, Capitals, the Capitals and the and Islanders. And I like that how they're ending the season on that because it's like a playoff game. So yeah. you don't have to play down it's to be your great. Opponent. So I like the last that. four games are basically going to be a, a playoff game. I yeah. mean, so the, the way that. I'm looking at it is the next four games are must wins. And then the two games after that are against the Rangers. And hopefully must they play. win at least they, – they should win. Um, but if they're going to lose, lose one. Okay. I'd be okay with them losing one as long as they win the next four, including tonight. It. There you have it from Tom. I so. would be in the same, uh, same predicament on those um, – estimations right there so let's hope for the best for the Bruins sake um, another thing too to think about is that uh, fan capacity is going to be increased on uh, August 1st eight. no 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 we're going even sooner even sooner even on sooner. May something I think we're up to 25 percent capacity uh, they're so they're upping it they're happen. listening yeah no uh, no the, on August 1st I think they're going to try to loosen uh, oh, all, all businesses to reopen yeah. at 100 percent yeah yeah i thought i'm sorry i i had it somewhere i thought it was 
It might be, it be the end of May, actually. That might be what it is. So, no, but it's, it's coming nice up soon. Coming up soon. Yeah. Some kind of a normal state. So it's, it's uh, all good on that front. Let me see. I well, have Tom's checking out that. Um, I'll have a a nice discussion here with Phil about his lovely Celtics. And they are all mine. They Don't are you all yours. It. Don't you forget it. Yep. So. They did get a win against the Hornets last night. Uh, they returned Jalen Brown and Jason Tatum. Kemba's still out, if I'm not mistaken. Robert Williams, yeah. that, that leg injury looks like it's becoming more serious of an issue, which is not good. Well, did um, Robert Williams get taken out of that game? I forget. I don't even think he played. No, he, he played last night, I believe. Oh, did he play last night? He mm -hmm. did, he did. And then uh, Marcus Smart sat out last night for his vulgar mouth. For threatening a ref. They, or using threatening language. Yep. They didn't say he threatened them. They said he used threatening language, which I don't know what that means. Do you know he's been fined over $250,000 in his NBA career? Yeah, I believe that. <laughs> I, that it doesn't surprise me. That made me laugh last night when I saw it. Uh, May 10th. May 10th. Stadium capacity at 25%. May 10th, I told you. I told you. So right before the playoffs. I wasn't was doubting you. I just. Yep. Um, um, oh, in TD Garden, about 4,900 people will be allowed. Hey, it's better than nothing. Gillette, 16,500. And then yep. Polar Park at 2,400. Fenway at 9,500. We're getting there. We are getting there. So I know Phil had to jump up here for a second, but just with his Celtics. Um, I, I, I know they won. I mean, Phil, I'm, I'm sorry, but I, I, No, you don't have to apologize to me. I don't want them. I just don't believe, I don't believe in this team. I no, you don't. And honestly, you don't, you shouldn't, uh, you can, uh, listen, I love watching basketball with like, the Celtics, but I like, I like when the team, I hate to say I'm a bandwagon fan. I just don't like the, I just don't like that. But right now I am. I just don't have anybody that I'm glued to my TV that I need to watch on a nightly basis. Like I remember back with the Paul Pierce era with Kevin Garnett and all those. Yeah. That was much must watch. It was enjoyable. It was fun. It was exciting. Even Isaiah Thomas, that was fun to watch. This just feels like watching paint. I don't know. I just don't get it with Brown and Tatum. I don't get it. I don't get it. I think that they can be great, but I also think, you know, they have, I, I've said this numerous times and other pundits have said it and other people have written about it. You know, they just have to give a crap sometimes more or less than the other and play a, a little harder. And, and, and Jalen Brown, I'll always enjoy his play. His style, and Jason Tatum too, but Brown's uh, been more, uh, I've been more impressed with his uh, stuff as of late. And I think he's evolved and it might be to the detriment of his defense. He's evolved more as an offensive, explosively offensive player. And yeah, it's sad because he was considered a, a really good two-way player. And I think that kind of got stripped a little on the defensive end because I think he's focusing more on offense. But um, yeah, I mean, honestly, I, I, you don't, who is your starting five? And then when you say that, you say like, oh, is it, is it Thompson, uh, Brown, Tatum, and Kemba? And then maybe Smart? But honestly, uh, as one of my buddies said, I'd like to have Smart on as a uh, on the second unit. Uh, but I don't know. You need, and I know there's a lot of excuses uh, that you know they haven't all played together uh, a lot, and it's true, I guess. Really? But I mean, so no, they haven't. But so haven't a lot of like you know Kevin Durant hasn't played with his team. The same thing, though. Yeah. Yeah, hundred percent. And I, I think that's not an excuse, but it's also, and I, I listen. I think when they do play together. You see what happens. Um, and I, I think that five-game stretch that they were winning, I think five or six games, it, uh, they did some decent stuff, and they, yep. still had, they still had room to grow. And then they just kind of fell off, you know, against Brooklyn they could have won. They made a good uh, effort to come back. And uh, I don't know. I don't know where this team could go. But give me that you had a, you had a lead. I, I want to hear ready, it. I, I want to hear I'm ready oh. to tell you this because you're going to be surprised even to hear this too. So – Mike Gorman, the voice of the Celtics, was on Toucher and Rich yesterday morning. And one of the hosts of the show, I think it was Fred Toucher, asked uh, Mike Gorman if he feels that Tatum or Brown are leaders and they can lead this team into the future. And he said no. 
very blunt, very upfront with his response. He said, no, he doesn't feel like they're mature enough. He doesn't feel like they are leader types. He thought that Kemba Walker was going to be that guy when they got the Celtics to be the leader and be that person that kind of keeps the glue and everything together. He went out on a limb and said Marcus Smart was more of the leader of the Celtics than anything, which is exactly how I felt with the whole matter. You know, Gorman's been the voice for 40 plus years. He's been with the team for years and years and years. I trust his opinion. I trust what he sees. I trust what he knows. And I think exactly what he said is what I, a lot of people like myself feel. They're not going anywhere with Jalen Brown and Jason Tatum. They need another big anchor that's with them if they're going to go anywhere with a championship, at least in my eyes. So what that looks like, I don't know. I think they thought they had it with Kyrie. I think they thought they had it with Kemba and with Gordon Hayward. But it's very clear that at least other people see what fans of my caliber and everything also look at for this team is they see children. That's what they are. It's children. They could be spoiled, rotten children. I think Brown is a little bit higher on the leader pole, if I was to give anything. But Tatum, I think he is a loose cannon that his shit doesn't stink kind of mentality. That I think that it's water and I, or water and oil mixing together. With, I think they like each other, but I think their leaderships and their styles of play aren't leader like i think i think they have powerful. different different styles and i apologize i they missed you have different styles yes I, I i apologize i missed a bunch of what you said because i had to take a call for a second but okay. uh, i heard the tail end about like yeah and I, a lot of people have said that this i came mean, from Mor- mike gorman this did not come yeah, from me i'm not oh no i'm not spewing lies no no and you- honestly honestly i don't i think part of it is you do one with the other and it's kind of a tough and I kind of think you can kind of make it work. They can be complimentary. They can be your Clay Thompson and your uh, and your Steph Curry. But I either it takes another coach, or it just take you just build the team differently around them entirely. I don't I don't know because you need people because I don't think I think Tatum and I think Gorman has said this before too, and I like Gorman a lot, and he know obviously he knows his stuff. And he's with the he's been with the team for like thirty plus years. It's very refreshing when somebody that is not connected with the team is able to come out and say exactly what's on his mind, not beat around. Oh yeah, this team will be fine. No, he's honest. He's straightforward. You might not like what he has to say, but he's real. Yeah, I mean, and honestly, I don't think uh, I think we should use more terms like leader hole, uh, as you brought up earlier. Because I, I couldn't in my head, I just was giggling. I so, I'm sorry, I'm a kid, but uh, no, I know what you mean. But the children, the, the, the children leader, out there. yeah, well, I and honestly, uh, like Tatum kind of is a child. I mean, he's an yeah. adult in a way, but he was he like 23 or 22? He's uh, blah 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 blah. blah I think blah. he's like 22 or 23, which yeah. you know, he's in that a league, five year old kid. Well, he's a five-year, he's like a four-year-old, I mean, uh, he's a four-year-old vet there. I mean, who knows? Because he came in when he was 18, right? Yes. I think this is his fourth year, I think so. Fourth yep. or fifth. And this is Jalen's fifth, I believe. Yep. And they're both young. They're both pretty young. And I don't, but I also, I don't know, man. I I, I say you're, you're, you've uh, committed to both of them. I don't think it's wise to move away per se, but if something else comes along that like opens things up, like go for it. Who knows? Like, are you I trying to build a, a legacy? Very what are you trying interesting to do? Interesting off season for the Celtics. I'm just going to yeah. put that out on a limb, and I think something's going to something's going to strike where either you're getting Danny Ainge out, or the owners are stepping in and saying this is how we're going to trade and this is how we're going to do things. But oh. Look out for a big splash like Bradley Beal. I think the message is clear to ownership that fans are not happy with the product that they put on the field or on the court, whatever you want to call it, this year. Because they didn't do much. Danny continued to stick by and overvalue his Grant Williams and his Daniel Tyson's and his semi Ojales and all these other little pieces so there was no other movement for other big name players. 
We'll have to see what happens on. Yeah, it. I mean, that's the front on the south. If I if I were to be honest about like Victor Oladipo when he went to um, the Heat, I was really upset about that because if there was a deal to be made, he's Greg yeah. Oladipo. You need, and he's a guy you would need, and he's a guy. Need listen, names that have not just names. A- that have somewhat of a good background or good or career that can play. I mean, I mean I, a resume. Well, I mean, I think, like I said, I think Bradley Beal, who's, uh, I guess, very chummy with Tatum, would be a good uh, combo. And maybe you package, I don't know, Brown and uh, Kemba with them. But I honestly like Kemba. I like Kemba. I think Kemba is actually... I like him as a player, and I, he seems like a really good teammate. And he yes, seems he like does. a nice enough guy. I, I, I actually probably – I think I've heard great things about Kemba. Yeah, and uh, listen, it, it shows kind of a little bit of how he carries himself. But I, I think, like, he's one of those guys who, you know, he can't play every game. He, he is a bit rusty, and he hasn't been, like, incredibly clutch for you at, at the times you really need him. Yep. Uh, sometimes he can hit down a he uh, this year I can and I haven't seen every game but I've seen enough this year to say like there's maybe like one or two spots this year where he's really uh really uh raise the uh the competition raise the bar. Raise oh raise the bar, the bar or just yep. you know yeah hit a game winner or just like yep. really hit, hit something home but yep I don't know it's uh they're a frustrating team in a lot of ways they really are Scalabrini Goodbye. said it best about yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, oh what he said. Yeah, well, he said conflict. it's a real head scratcher when they lost yeah, to he's Thunder. A real he can't. I don't know. He he's. I think he's pretty great. But and he can be a homer of sorts. But he actually is pretty critical when it comes down to it. And you know, you just like anyone else, you listen I'll to what they're saying. Pack and drive him to Logan anytime I can. I mean, I guess I don't know. He, he could just get an Uber. That's true. But true. he could pay pay for the Uber. That's all you need. Last thing that I do want to mention here on the show, I didn't talk about the Red Sox at any point, but if I were to tell you that the Red Sox would be 17 and 10 to start the month of April, how would best, you feel? Best uh, record in the league or tied for best they have, record. They, the they are tied with the Dodgers for the best record right now. They are 16 and 9, I believe, right now. Or 15 and 9. I think they are, no, I think it's 15 and 9. With well, the Dodgers or the Red Sox? Uh, the, the Red Sox. The Red, Red Sox. Sox. The Dodgers have the same, same record. But. Yeah. This is a breath of fresh air for this team. They have a lot of players to like. They have a lot of things going in their their way so far in this season that have uh, opened some eyes to some people. I want to mention some names that I think deserve some recognition here and deserve you know some watch. Number one on my list, Garrett Whitlock. The kid is a stud. If you haven't written a thank you note to the New York Yankees yet, please address your self-enclosed envelope to whatever the address. But anyways, it is outstanding to see a guy come in from your bullpen and just be absolute filth and dominant. He's the one that got away from the Yankees. I'm even going out on a limb here and saying this kid is the real deal. I think that you're going to see a bigger role of him, more high leverage situations, don't be surprised to see him get inserted into the starting rotation very, very soon. Um, I don't know if you guys got a chance to see this kid pitch. He is a horse. He has electric stuff, pinpoint control. He's got three different pitches that are just money in the bank. Helped last night to get a nice hold and get a nice victory against Jacob DeGrom and the New York Mets. So that's one name. The other name I want to mention, and this is a shocker to many of you because this person has been on my dartboard for years, Matt Barnes. Wow. Who is this guy? Wow. Who is this guy? Is this a Jonathan Papelbon coming back to life or something or Koji Uehara? Like, what is going on? Who is this imposter? Will the real Matt Barnes please stand up? He Where'd is, the real Nick face go? Oh, uh, I think yeah. he's out there, actually. It's <laughs> no, but shocking. That, but isn't he, wouldn't he, we, it was said by a lot of people and I, you, he would be I the key. I'm, and honestly, I'm stunned. My jaw's still on the floor with him when he pitches. I, I don't know what happened. I don't know if this new pitching coach picked up on something, if he got his head cleared out or whatnot. I don't know. But this is not the Matt Barnes that we've seen for years. This kid is electric right now. As X says, 
he is throwing salad out there. That salad, it's got some extra croutons and bacon bites and whatever dressing that you like in it. It is just, it, it's outstanding. Cobb salad, here it comes. That's what he's throwing right now. I so still have that's to. Another one, that's another one I'm very high up on. Um, if Xander Bogarts, again, he doesn't get the recognition that he deserves. He's one of the best shortstop in the game. The, all this hype about Francisco Lindor and whoever the Dodgers shortstop is and all the other has-beens out there in the league. Xander Bogarts just shows up and plays baseball every day. He hits, he fields, he does the game right. He's a leader up, up, of the, up in the club. I would give him the captain of my team any day of the week. I mean, he's been outstanding. I can't say enough good things about what I've seen from him. Um, I think we're seeing um, some good stuff from Alex Verdugo. You know, he's been playing all around the field, but he's doing a heck of a job doing it. Uh, Raphael Devers is squaring up the ball quite well. Um, we've gotten some pretty decent pitching from a guy named Nick Pavetta. He has the lowest ERA of all starting pitchers right now on the team. Might throw some walks, might not be, you know, pinpoint control, but he's he's showing that he's unhittable right now. I believe he's 4-0 to start the season so far for the Red Sox, which is great. Um, you got Eduardo Rodriguez, who came back from that COVID bout he had last year, throwing the ball um, very well. Again, I still feel he's a little soft, so I want to see him rise above on a certain occasions and put his big boy pants on and be an ace. So we'll see how that goes as the season progresses. Uh, Nate baldi has been exactly kind of how he's been advertised. I have no issues with that. Um, there's a lot to like, a lot to like. And it's, and it's great to be able to have baseball again that's watchable, enjoyable, players that you can see on a nightly basis get the job done. Have to mention J.D. Martinez. I mean, he's hitting the cover off the ball. One of the best hitters in the American League. A lot of this is Alex Cora driven, but I will say a lot of this is just having very true professional baseball players that want to play. You know, it's uh, it's enjoyable. I hope it continues. They have a four game series next against the Texas Rangers. It kicks off this evening and uh, the Rangers aren't, you know, super great. So I don't think it's out of the realm of, realm of, of possibilities here. They don't take at least three out of four in this series. Um, so the best is yet to come. I still think of this team and we'll see how it goes. And it also helps that the Yankees are in last place in the division. Oh, I love it. Oh, I love it. It is just outstanding to see those frauds fall in their face. It is amazing. Boy, could they use an Adam Adovino, a Garrett Whitlock, uh, J.D. Martinez, who they passed up on. It is tremendous. Poor George Steinbrenner in his grave is just rolling yeah. all over the place. Poor. Right? <laughs> oh, yeah. George, what about boy, that poor... That poor family. That poor oh, wait, I'm family. Sorry. Enough I'm bad sorry. things can't happen to them. I, I stand corrected. The Yankees stay stand one game ahead of the Orioles right now. Oh. <laughs> They're climbing. Uh, any, anything They're else climbing. you guys want to add on the well, Red Sox? I, I, I thought, what about Garrett, Garrett Richards on the Red Sox, too? You have to mention that outing. He probably had the best outing of any starting pitcher the other night. He went, I think, seven strong with only one run. Uh, 10 plus strikeouts after an abysmal start to his kind of season, you know, fans are starting to turn on him big time and he shut everybody up. So way to go, buddy. You know, keep, keep telling people like me off. I love it. Keep telling us off. Yeah, I've been I guess... in Twitter jail all spring long. So, I mean, the only ones that hate me are the Celtics. So, I mean, that's cool. It's cool in my book. Everybody else just, yeah, well, that's because you're all loving W and Matt Barnes now. Yeah, who else have you? Uh, who have... else have you gained the wrath of? Who else has like? Oh, I'm I'm, I'm real friendly with Will Middlebrooks now. I'm I'm friendly with uh, oh, really? Joel Joel Pinheiro. Yeah, another one of my Twitter buddies. Um, <laughs> yeah, me and Jenny Dell have a thing now. Don't tell Will, but <laughs> mm -hmm. I won't. Who else, who else are we friendly with? Oh, Tom Karen, I've been good with. Um, Caravis, you know me and him. We go. We Tyra go Banks. Back. Yeah. Tyra Caravis. Banks. Caravis. Yeah, Caravis here. Um, yeah. So, hey, Martin Perez and I aren't on speaking terms, but it's all good. It's all good. It's all good in the land of Twitter. You'll get back. You'll get back. 
Yeah, he's got a. He's you got, love he's birds. A you love birds. We'll get back to it. Yeah, yeah he's got something to put tonight. <laughs> Don't suck, and then we'll be friends. It's simple. <laughs> it's fine. Uh, that's about it I have on this show. This was uh, this was quite a time. We talked about a lot, a lot of good things again. The draft tonight, the Patriots and the NFL. We'll see what happens with more uh, more moves that are up, uh, upcoming and uh, could be unexpected. So we'll break that down next time when we're with you here on another episode of Face the Facts. Uh, for Nick Face and Phil Healy and Tom Smith, stay dry. Yeah.